We respond to the environments we're in. Get the environment right, you get the right behavior. Get the environment wrong, you get the wrong behavior. I'll tell you one quick story. It's a true story that captures it just so perfectly. I was staying at the uh, Four Seasons in Las Vegas, which is a wonderful hotel. And the service there is really great. The reason it's such a great hotel is because of the people who work there. And I had an experience with a young man by the name of Noah. And Noah is a barista in the coffee shop that they have just there in the lobby. And I was buying a cup of coffee and Noah was charming and funny and engaging. And I think I gave a 100% tip. I think my $5 coffee, I think I gave a $5 tip. I mean, this guy was great. I, I loved talking to him. He was a joy. And I asked him, do you like your job? He said to me, I love my job without skipping a beat. And I asked, what is it that the Four Seasons is doing that you love your job so much? He says, well, again, without skipping a beat, he says, throughout the day, managers will walk past and ask how I'm doing and if there's anything that I need. He said, not just my manager, any manager. He says, I feel supported here. He says, quote, I can be myself. Right? Then, oh, it's magic. And then he says to me, I also work at Caesar's Palace. And there, the managers go around to make sure that we're doing everything right and catch us if we do something wrong. He says, when I go to work at Caesar's Palace, I keep my head just under the radar because I don't want to get in trouble. He says, I just want to get through the day and make a paycheck. Right? Same person. The experience that I have at the Four Seasons will be diametrically opposite to the experience that I have at Caesar's Palace, not because of Noah, but because of Noah's leadership. And the joke is, if I were to go talk to the managers over Caesar's Palace and say, you know it's you, they'll say, but you don't understand, we cannot get good work out of our people. Look, look, no matter how hard we try and how hard we push them, they just don't, so we either have to replace them or push them harder. No. We respond to the environments we're in. Get the environment right, you get the right behavior. Get the environment wrong, you get the wrong behavior. If that is what is happening, it is because of leadership, not because of the people. My friend George, who's a three-star general in the Marine Corps, he says his test for leadership, and I love this, he goes, his test for a good leader is if you ask somebody how their day is going, you actually care about the answer. Right? The number of times we're walking to a meeting, we're rushing, we go, how are you? Not good, I gotta I got get to you later, I got, I'm late for a meeting. Right. If you ask the question, you are standing there and you are listening to the answer. It's those little innocuous things that you do over and over and over and over that people will say, I love my job. Not I like my job. I like my job means, yeah, the challenge is great, they pay me well, I like the people. I love my job means, I don't want to work anywhere else. I believe loving your work is a right and not a privilege. I despise the fact, I lament the fact, I curse the fact that so few people get to say, I love my job, as if they've won some lottery. You know, you go out with your friends and somebody says, I love my job, and everybody goes, oh my God, you're so lucky, right? Um, uh, that to me is madness. Everybody, the vast majority, should get to wake up and say, I love my job. It is a right, it is a God-given right that we should love where we work, and we should demand it. We should demand that our leaders provide an environment in which we want to come, where we want to care about, we, about each other, where we feel safe to express our vulnerabilities and our fears and our concerns, that we're open to correction and discipline and feedback, that we're not defensive because we know that it's being given to help us improve and grow, and we want to improve and grow. Um, and in turn, we will help others improve and grow. Because when we feel safe, when we feel that our leaders care more about us than a number. They care more about our lives and our confidence and our joy and our skill set more than some short-term gain. That they care more about our priorities than the priorities of some disinterested external constituency. Then we will respond in kind and we will offer our blood and our sweat and our tears and we will make sacrifices of all kinds to see that our leader's vision is advanced and that this company continues to thrive. Not for them, for ourselves. It becomes deeply personal. It becomes something we love contributing to. I talk about it all the time. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And I'm tired of listening to CEOs saying, we only hire passionate people. What, you don't even know what that means. How do you know that they're passionate for interviewing and not passionate for working? You know, pa every person on the planet has passion, right? We just don't all have passion for the same things. Give me something to believe in. 
give me something to believe in, give me the opportunity to contribute to something, allow me to make mistakes and try again. And you'll have passion up the wazoo. But Noah, Noah only has passion in one of his jobs. He has stress in the other one of his jobs. Same guy, same guy, different leadership.